Well, everybody loves a robot and everybody loves kids, so we're here in the Wonder Workshop booth with Brian Miller, going to tell us about some fun-looking products here. Yeah, so we're showing a number of different products. Uh, we have Dash here that's been with us for many years. That's still a staple in schools and families from starting kindergarten five years old on up. And what, what is Dash? Dash is a robot that teaches children how to code starting in kindergarten and five and six years old. I do think we talked to you guys before, so what do you have this year? So this year we're featuring Q, which is our newest robot. So we have Q here. Q is designed to take children from block programming, which they've learned with Dash, and learn how to JavaScript program. Whoa, I'm doing a show called uh, Learning uh, Programming by Stealth where we're learning JavaScript. Perfect, well Q can be your physical coding robot that teaches you that as well. Okay, I totally need this, Steve. <laughs> So Q has a lot of the same stuff that's built into Dash, the sensors, but everything's been upgraded. So we can do a lot. I assume people don't know what it is, so start a little more from scratch. Sure. So Q is a robot that comes pre-built out of the box that once you turn it on and you have the free app to go along with it, the Q app, you connect it to an iPad, Android device, or Amazon Kindle Fire, you can jump in and you can start programming. And Did you skip the iPhone on purpose? Nope. iPhone, okay. Android device. Okay, you said I iPad, iPad, so I was yeah, yeah. So any device iOS. Device. Yeah. Okay, great. IOS I'm going to describe this a little bit for the audio listeners. It's three balls with one ball on top. It's got a cool looking little face with some lights. It's got little rollers underneath. Uh, looks like you can go any direction. Yeah, so it has uh, it has motors that actually measure the distance in which it travels. So if you tell it to drive forward 30 centimeters, it stops at exactly 30 centimeters. Oh, nice. And that's in your JavaScript code, huh? You can control that through the JavaScript code, yeah. It also has uh, rear sensors and front sensors on the left side and right side, but it also reads in the center as well. So knows if something's approaching from the left side, knows if something's approaching from the right side, it can also see in the middle. It also has accelerometers and gyroscope built in. So it knows if it's being picked up, put down. It also knows how fast it's going. Oh, nice, nice. Can we take a look at the app, what yeah. that looks like? So inside of this app, we can do a number of different things. The first thing that we can do is we can text a robot. We can have a conversation with a robot. So the first thing that people always want to know is what can I say to a robot? Well, you can tell anything to a robot and we're programming it through written expression. So this is showing people that through just simple typing and texting, we could tell a robot to do anything based off of our English written language. So I could tell a robot to sing me a song. You've practiced typing with your thumb. It's in, yeah, it's tough. So now, Okay, that's a nice song. Great singing voice, too. Yeah, that wasn't me. You wouldn't want to hear me do the singing. <laughs> but I can go in and I can tell it to do stuff. I can program it also. I can tell it to drive forward. I can tell it to turn red. So if you type drive forward, turn red, how about turn red? Yep, so I can show you here some of the preset actions in which we can do. So you type menu and type we're waiting menu. to see, here's the commands we can type. So these are just some of the commands. There's tons of them that are also built in, but something like robot control, is move forward 30, meaning 30 centimeters. Or turn for me, test a sensor shield. So it goes through and teaches you all about its sensors and how it operates and works. So by typing in any of these commands, it'll help you learn about the robot. Start learning how to talk to it, okay. And then from there, we can go in and we can control the robot. So simple remote control car type of version of the app. I'm gonna describe this for the audio only listeners. There's a, uh, it says robot control at the top. We got a big button, sort of a joystick on the left maybe. And over on the right, we can see the sensors that the robot can see in some buttons yes. and speed. So with the sensors, we're able to control things like seeking and avoiding and exploring. Can you see he's moving his hand? Can you see he's so moving his hand below, Steve? Closer, I can see on screen that it's changing as well where the sensor is on the robot. And from so behind. the screen is showing the uh, that he's moving his hand in front of the back and in front of the front. That's pretty cool. So this teaches you all about how sensors operate on, on robots. So it's a great visual way to do that. Then we have in here create, which is our unique programming language that we've created. It's based off of state machines. And state machine programming is really designed how robots interact with the real world. Now when we're dealing with a lot of other programming uh, robots that are out there, we're running in a linear sequence. So we're telling it to drive forward, turn left, turn right, but what happens if something runs up in front of it in the middle of your program? What are you going to do? Well, run into it. You're going to run into it or it's going to just knock it over or whatever. With this type of programming environment, I can build this based off of cues and actions. So if it sees something in front of it, 
it'll branch off and do a whole other subset of programs based on what it sees. Oh, wow. So this really gets into the idea of autonomous vehicles and how they navigate the real world. So something as simple as me dragging and dropping head movement, I can take the start arrow and connect it to the head movement arrow, and when I hit play, Q's head moves. I can continue that sequence by taking it and dropping on a color change. So now, when I hit play, it'll do the color change. So his head moved and turned green. So I can do other things based off of this now. So I can say, if it sees something in front of it, do that action. So now I'm gonna hit play and wait for it. And when I move my hand in front, it now goes through and does that action. So it just turned his head and turned green when he put his hand in front of the sensor. Nice. But what happens if something appears behind it? So I can build out another program on the side here, connect the arrow going in the opposite direction. We'll change this color to fuchsia. And now when I change this state to see something behind, and it won't let me choose he's just front. He's just tapping on different spots on the screen here in the menu. It's been, I, I think I could follow this. It's, it's very visual, so I can see where the sensors are reading. And now when I hit play, put something behind it, it now changes to that color. So I can have it go back and forth, see something in front, see something behind. That's, a, that's fabulous. I love it. So it's a very visual way. Our, my, my JavaScript programming class doesn't look like this. No, this is state machine programming. I'm going to show you JavaScript. Oh. So JavaScript programming is using our coding platform here, all still within the same app. So, just tap create new. So I'm going to, this is our block programming environment. So this is something that children are very familiar with. This is the traditional way of teaching a lot of programming across a lot of other apps and programs. And it's all blocks. So it's like stacking a bunch of Lego pieces together. So I can drag in a distance block inside of the start button. So if I hit start, it would drive forward at a speed of 25 centimeters at a speed of 20 centimeters per second. I can also go in here. I'm glad you're making them do metric. Yep. And choose color. So now it's going to do the distance, it's going to do the color change, but with the click of a button at the top, I can toggle between block and JavaScript. All right, so zoom in on the JavaScript there, Steve. You being a JavaScript programmer that you're working on, you can see here that we have the JavaScript oh, i got to read this out loud. It says actions.move, parentheses 25, 20, actions.setLightColor, parentheses lights.all, actions.colorPicker. I actually vaguely understand that. Yeah, I mean, so this is something that if you are learning JavaScript, you can go in here and you can start typing your own program without us giving it to you. So if you want to invent something of your own inside of this app, you can just type in the JavaScript to do that. Or I could just use your little block thing to figure out the answers to my homework that i got to type in JavaScript. Or you could do that. And what we've done here is when you're in JavaScript mode, all the blocks will convert into JavaScript as well. So now I can see those blocks with the JavaScript syntax that's written in, in its place. Oh, that's really cool. This is the, this is the, uh, the test platform I actually need. <laughs> Why do you say this is for children? I like it. It's for 11 on up. So oh, yeah. I play with it all the time and I learn JavaScript how to do this as well. The other neat thing with this as well is I can start typing and as I'm learning, I'm not sure of what I should be typing. It shows me uh, choices as I type in letters. So it'll start to subtract and go through some of those different pieces. So I could say actions dot move, very similar to what I had up top. But now that I've typed it in JavaScript, I want to see it in block. So I click back in block, and it brought it into block as well. So I can go through and I can design in JavaScript, test it in block to make sure that it works appropriately. What I like about this is this is going to be able to grow with the child, right? Yes. Is at the very simplest levels, it's fun to play with, and then they get curious and go farther and farther into this. So um, this is available when? It's, it's available now. It just came out in October. Oh, that's fantastic. And how much is the Q? Q is $199. Really? Yeah, and with, with all of that, that's actually not bad at all. The app is free, and uh, all you need is the robot and a device. Can you play with the app without the device? You, need to, you can play with the app, but you need the device to see it come to life. Okay, but I could play with the JavaScript part it's for gonna, free, good night? It's going to ask you to pair to a robot before you even get into that. Oh, so you darn. Need the robot. All right, well, I want the robot anyway. All right, so Brian, uh, where do people go to find out more about Q? You can learn more at www.makewonder.com. Great, thank you very much. This has been fantastic. Thank you.